Hey guys, Brendonia Productions here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about something that I don't normally talk about, a computer science topic, hash functions. So hash functions are actually an extremely interesting aspect of cryptography. Their definition is, uh, from a simple, strict point of view, any function that maps arbitrarily long data to something of a set length in a non-reversible collision resistant way. So this means that given any set of data, whether it be a string, a file, uh, some word document, a hash function can map that file to something of a set length. So let me go ahead and write down exactly what I mean. So a hash function would be f of x uh, maps to y. And the specifications are y, uh, the length of y, is constant. Uh, what else? It's collision resistant. So for all x, f of x is not equal to f of f of <laughs> x prime, where x is not equal to x prime, right? Now, at the same time, for all x, f of x is equal to f of x, where x equals x, of course. So we have this interesting property where we are able to compare arbitrarily length data. Uh, so essentially, if you have a two pictures, right, and the pictures can be five megabytes each, you can hash them into something of a set length, let's say 256 bits, and uh, or maybe 256 bytes, or depending on which hash function you choose, you can map them to something of a set length, and then compare those things of a set length. And the nature of a hash function pretty much guarantees that if the hashes are not the same, the contents of whatever you hashed is not the same. Of course, this is a basic assumption. And in reality, it's not true that these are 100% collision resistance. They're just collision resistance with high probability. So there's one more interesting aspect, which is given y, there is no way to invert f of f of uh, x, right? You, there's basically, there is no f uh, inversion. What is this? To the negative one. There is no inverse function. Right, so you're not able to calculate the original contents from the hash. So these are very interesting properties, and hash functions are used all over the place. For instance, virus detection software just stores hashes of virus binaries, right? And then it performs hashes of all files on your system and compares those hashes. If you're storing passwords in a system, you probably want to store the hash of a function. Therefore, if somebody cracks your database, they just get hashes instead of the actual passwords. Now, there are some corollaries with that, but those are to be discussed at another time. Right, and since there's no way to reverse engineer, especially for the password case, if you get the database full of hashes, there's no way to recover the actual passwords. So hash functions are pretty promising, and they're a pretty great aspect of computer science. Some popular hash functions you might have heard of. Now, these are actually called keyless hash, fun hash functions. So notice that we are just taking the function and giving it contents, and it gives us a hash here. Uh, there are two types of hash functions, keyless and keyed. So keyed hash functions, keyed hash functions, Look something like f of key and contents gives you a hash. In this video, we're only going to be focusing on keyless hash functions. So some examples of hash functions, some popular hash functions, I should say. I'm sure you've heard of MD5 is a popular one, SHA1, SHA256. And there are some non-popular ones that are uh, kind of gaining popularity, but they're a little less common, right? You have Blake, Blake 2B, Blake 2S, SHA, several variants, 512, SHA 3, 
Shah, all of this goodness. There's also even, there's something called shake, right? So, and then there are other hash functions that are used in uh, popular cryptographic scenarios uh, that I won't be covering in this video, but there are tons. And there are regularly competitions to come up with new hash functions. So the biggest challenge in building hash, fu hash functions is their collision resistance. So since you're taking arbitrarily long data and mapping it to data of a set length, right? It feels like there might be a collision somewhere. If you take a million, uh, 512 megabyte files and hash them all, it feels like there is a small probability of them. The hash is being equal when the content is different, right? Because the hashes are pretty small compared to the file size content. And indeed that is what's happened. MD5 is proven to be non collision resistant. SHA-1, only recently, I believe last year, has been proven to be non-collision resistant. Now, SHA-256, SHA-3, uh, several others have not been proven to be uh, non-collision resistant yet. So, there is there are still some super secure hash functions you can use to not have collisions. And collisions are bad because uh, once you have a collision, you can start actually detecting what the user input was by comparing it to the collision. So let's go ahead and demonstrate actually these hash functions. Uh, so Python has a pretty rich hash function library. So I'm just going to use that. Uh, I'm sure most programming languages have a hash function library. Uh, Unix has some, well, Linux ships with some uh, hash commands such as MD5 sum, SHA1 SHA sum, SHA256 sum that you can use. Uh, but if you don't have access to any of those, watching this video will be just fine. So we're going to import hashlib, which has all of the hash functions. And then I'm just going to call hashlib dot, let's do MD5, right? And I'm going to do hello world. Oh, well. Okay, so <laughs> actually, this library is a little more complicated than I suggest than I originally imagined. Hex digest. Okay, so apparently this is how you use it. So basically, Python just mapped my string hello world into the MD5 hash of that string. Now, if I change the contents of this string, right, hello world, my name is Brandon. You'll see that we get a hash that is totally different, but the same length. So this is great, right? So we know that the two strings I type are different because their hashes are different. We can also use more advanced hashes, right? So I mentioned SHA-1. It produces a hash that is a little longer. So with that being longer, having a longer uh, hash space basically means that there's less chance for collision resistance because there's more, or less chance for collisions because there's more possible hashes. Of course, the length of the hash does not always imply more collision resistance. We can also do SHA-256, which is even longer, right? SHA-512, even longer. I'm not sure if there's a SHA-1024, let's give it a shot. No, no, there's not. <laughs> but you can actually, I believe, you can actually ask Python hashlib.available algorithms, I guess it's, it is algorithms. Uh, algorithms available. Okay, so you can yeah, you can actually ask it which hash algorithms it has, right? So there's some there's a cool one called Whirlpool. I don't know, uh, Ripe MD, ECDSA, MD4. There's even right. So you can even take advantage of some of these. Let's see if we can use Whirlpool effectively. That one sounds cool. Whirlpool. Okay, well. Apparently, it's not usable in that way. Anyway, so there's plenty of hash functions that you can use in order to, uh, you know, hash your data. So the one of the key things with hashing is that oftentimes it's quicker to hash a file and then compare the hash with other files, especially if you're comparing it with multiple files. So say you have a five megabyte image. You want to see if there are any duplicate images 
uh, on your system, right? One way would be to read the image uh, and then, you know, gather up all of the bytes in memory. And then for every other image on your system, compare all of the, all each byte to each other byte and see if any of them are not equal, then the images are not equal. Well, for files that are equal, this could take a very long time, right? Because you're comparing each individual byte. So another strategy is to hash the original image and then hash each, Im each other image and simply compare the hashes. Like I mentioned before, this is exactly how virus detection systems work. So I actually want to do a small exercise to see uh, how these stack up. So let's go ahead and read in a large file. So I'm going to say with open large file, this is a, a file that I've already created. Uh, contents equals f dot read. So now we have contents and contents should be pretty big, right? It's, it's decently big, five megabytes, 5.5 megabytes. So if we want to see if contents equals contents, right? We can do a comparison like this or, but this means that we're comparing uh, 500, 5.5 megabytes worth of things. Actually, I don't know if Python uh, actually compares each byte with each byte. So we're going to have, I think under the hood, Python might actually do some hashing, right? So we're going to go ahead and try doing that. So traditionally you would say something like for B in contents, if B uh, is, uh, you know, for B in B1, B2 in zip contents, contents. This is just comparing each individual byte of the contents. If B1 is not equal to B2, print not equal. Uh, right, so doing that comparison, we didn't get a print not equal, but you could see that it actually took a little bit of time. Now, the alternative is to do something like contents the content hash. So we'll just say hash equals hash lib. And we're just going to use MD5. So previously, you saw that MD5 was an algorithm that produces a sort of short key. Uh, however, it's proven to be non collision resistant. But since it pr produces a short key, uh, and by the nature of it, MD5 is actually pretty fast. So if you're looking for something that doesn't need to be super secure, but needs to be fast, MD5 is usually the way to go. Indeed, sometimes if you look on uh, download sites, you can download a file and you can also download the MD5 hash of that file. And then when you download the file, you can hash the file and compare the hash to the downloaded MD5 hash. And if they're equal, you know that your, your file was not messed with when it was being transferred to you, or maybe the network lost a bit somehow. So we're going to go ahead and MD5 the contents here. And you can see that that was actually pretty fast and hex digest, right? So now if we actually compare this to, well, I guess it itself, right? It's true. So these two files are the same. So the last part of this video, I actually want to do uh, an actual timing comparison between uh, these two methods, right? Reading each byte or comparing via hash. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit Python and we're actually going to go ahead and write a quick Python uh, file. Okay, so I actually created this small program to compare the timing between comparing bytes and comparing hashes. So this small program basically opens three files, three large files, right? And we want to see if all three files, or we have a candidate file, and we want to see if two other files are duplicates of this candidate file. So the program basically uh, times comparing bytes or comparing hashes, right? So let's go ahead and try it out. So you can see almost immediately the difference between the two. So both of them return true, right? They are all the same file. One and two are equal, true. One and three are equal, true. Uh, and then for the hashing method, one and two are equal, true. One and three are equal, true. Except 
The quantum comparison method took half a second, where the hash comparison took two hundredths of a second. So definitely a speed difference there. If you're doing this process many times and comparing many, many, many files, you can see that the gains from using the hashing method are going to be much larger than on this small scale. So that's file hashing for you. Uh, a simple way. Well, under the hood, it's not so simple, but using it is definitely simple. A simple way to map any length content to collision resistant uh, set length content. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you're interested in more uh, cryptographic videos, let me know. Anyway, have a good one and uh, see you in future videos.